I have a question for you. Some of you will know this answer. I did not. What is the largest living organism on Earth? Now, some people might think it's a giant sequoia. That's where my mind went, or a blue whale. It is actually an aspen tree. Well, it started with one single aspen tree seed approximately 14,000 years ago, and that one seed comes uh, 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 from, of course, the divine, as we would, we would posit, and it created this massive underground root system that then created more aspen trees, all from that one original divine spark, that seed. It's called the pando tree. Scientists gave it that name, pando, from the Latin. Look at that. It's actually one tree. The pando aspen tree grove. Pando is from the Latin ice spread, because if you look at that, look at that. It's spread out of one single seed. The pando tree was identified as a single living organism because its parts possess identical genetic markers that share the same massive root system. It's amazing, it's considered to be one, one tree, one living thing. This plant, which it's considered to be also a plant, is located in south central Utah, here in the United States. This single aspen tree that has been cloned has approximately 47,000 tree trunks. <laughs> And over time, it has grown into this massive tree grove. It is 108 acres large, and it is estimated to weigh a collective mere 6,000 tons. So for me, when I look at the images of the pando, I'm able to visualize how they're all connected underground. Can you see it? You can, you can visualize the roots intertwining under the earth. So many of us have seen roots intertwined <laughs> under the earth. This, this exquisite, exquisite, divinely intelligent root system. And it, it gives birth to new shoots and new trees. So I'm able to understand how a grove of trees like that is interconnected, and us humans are just like that. However, we don't have as easy of a visual, do we? We don't, you know, we can't visibly see our roots. We can't visibly see how we're all connected to that one divine spark or seed of life. When we're walking down the street on our phones like this, it sure doesn't seem like we're connected to anything except our phones. But of course we are. Of course we're all connected. Science knows this. Every single human being on Earth shares 99.9% .9 of the same genetic makeup. All of us. Every single one of us. The brilliant astrophysicist, author, and science communicator, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, to know him is to love him. He wrote, we are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, to the rest of the universe atomically. We are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, to the rest of the universe atomically. So, why am I talking about this today? Because I have been reminded recently the spiritual call that we are all being asked into right now, which is compassion. Of course, it is so easy to, to be compassionate to those we love, to those people we know and agree with. As we all know, it's far more difficult to be compassionate for those we don't agree with. It is in moments of polarization and divisiveness that we humans forget so quickly that one divine spark that we are all connected to and from, the interconnected divine root system that we're all a part of. So how is it then, hmm, how is it that we can tangibly remember and see and understand and act 
towards each other as if we actually remember the eternal divine root system that we are all a part of. We do this, as the Buddha said, by staying awake. Spiritual practice helps us to do that. We talk a lot about spiritual practice around here. Why? Specifically because it allows us to stay awake. Awake and aware of all the ways that we human beings interconnect with each other on both the seen and the unseen sides of life. There is so much magnificence and divine orchestration that is happening every moment in every breath, every day, and so often we miss it. I know I do. I was reminded of this divine root system, this connection that we all have, the ways in which spirit that which we come from and moves through us for each other shows up in our daily life. Recently, very recently, I was at the Portland airport. I'm at the Portland airport a lot. For those of you who know, I travel a lot. It's really, it's important to me and uh, it's a huge part of my life. And as I was uh, coming off the plane and walking towards the Uber slash Lyft rideshare area, which I do all the time. My phone was coming out of airplane mode, and I'm just walking along, and I'm making my way, and I'm glancing at my phone. (laughs) Don't tell anyone. (laughs) I'm walking through, I'm glancing at my phone, and suddenly I see a bunch of texts from my sister, and I realize something has happened. And as I continue to walk, out the doors of the Portland airport and over to the Uber, Lyft, rideshare area, I learn that my Uncle Terry passed away. My beloved Uncle Terry, who was just a giant of a human being. And as I was sitting there waiting for the Uber, I wasn't in my body. You know, we've all experienced that. Shock, we, we, we leave our bodies. I was processing this information. I was flooded with him and memories of him. My heart immediately went to my mom, Peggy. They're very close and have had quite a, a history. Uh, my heart immediately went to his wife, Ginger, and their kids and my family and him. And I looked down and I I saw for the first time in all the times that I've ever been to the Uber Lyft rideshare place, the Ubers and the Lyfts were delayed by a minimum of 40 minutes. Had never happened. Had never happened in years of travel. So in my shock, I look over and I see the taxi stand and something in me says, you just need to go over and get a taxi. I don't, sorry taxi drivers. I don't usually take taxis. I take Ubers these days or Lyfts. And so I got up and I was so out of my body that actually I was halfway to the taxi stand when I realized I had forgotten my backpack. That's how out of my body I was. That's how much I was struggling to become present. And I grabbed my backpack and then I turned around and I went across the little road there. And as I looked up, I saw a woman in the distance wearing a stole, a cream-colored practitioner stole. And as I walked closer, I saw it was one of our practitioners. It was Janine, Terry Christopher's mama. We have two generations of practitioners. Janine, right here. Hi, darling. When I saw Janine in the airport wearing a stole, which is kind of (laughs) random, and yet not, oh, divine roots that we're all connected with, 
She happened to be there because we have a ministerial student retreat at our retreat center uh, in Cedar Ridge. And Janine had happened to volunteer to help support the ministerial students who were flying in to go to their retreat this weekend with transportation. I, 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 I looked at Janine and I immediately, immediately went right to her and just like this. <laughs> you knew right away, honey that something was going on internally for me, didn't you? Yeah. And I have to tell you, of all the gin joints, <laughs> I mean, for my heart to meet Janine's heart in that moment was so healing and such a divine reminder that God, that spirit, that source, that energy, that quantum consciousness, whatever word you want to use is always at work on behalf of all of us all the time. All the time. All the time. Just often by people who are not necessarily wearing a practitioner stole. When I was able to see Janine in her beautiful stole, it brought my heart back into my body, and it helped me remember in that moment that my Uncle Terry was on the other side of life saying to me, oh, darling, oh, darling, I know it's hard now, but I'm fine. Are you kidding me? It is so good here. I'm sharing this with you not only because this is where I'm at right now, and this is me. This is me being as authentic as I possibly can with you. I, I was so struck by that miracle. And then it led me to go inward and begin to recall all the times, all the times in my life, angels unaware, Angels entertaining us. You were my angel that day. And isn't it amazing how we so often are given the opportunity to be the angel for others in large ways and in small ways? That divine root system, if you will, is always at work. That was a glorious reminder of the interconnectedness that we all share for me, that we are always guided, guarded, and protected, that no matter what, spirit is always showing up in shoes around us, through us, as us, for us, reminding us the spiritual truth that we are all interconnected, we are all one. Now, if I were to logically ask, of 365 days out of the year, how many hours, seconds, minutes, all the things that had to conspire for that m moment, for me to get off the plane just at that time, taking that particular flight, walking at that pace, for the Ubers to be delayed for the first time ever, all of that, I tell you, my friends, the universe conspires for our good all the time, all the time. How is it possible that Janine showed up that day at that exact moment? <laughs> As Matt Kahn, who is going to be here Friday, May 12th, wrote, in a world of endless questions, like that one, in a world of endless questions, love is the only answer. Love is the only answer every time, every single time. I invite you in this moment to think of a time when someone you knew or someone you didn't know showed up as love at the exact time that you needed them. You know, your car runs out of gas, somebody comes by, all the things, all the things. We are literally each other's root system. We are here to provide nourishment and support for one another, to love people we know and to love people we don't know. Think of a time this might have happened to you. Can you just call that in? 
Or maybe a time when you were that for someone. When you were metaphorically wearing the stole. The title of my talk today is All That We Are. And this is it, my friends. All That We Are is about how we show up for ourselves and our sisters, brothers, and siblings in this world that we share. Ernest Holmes wrote, my soul meets the soul of the universe in everyone. My soul meets the soul of the universe in everyone. Isn't that glorious? I invite you to consciously work with this idea this week, this ancient spiritual idea. Because yes, of course, we are all living our own individual lives, of course, and my soul meets the soul of the universe in everyone. Ah. Ah. Because we're all in relationship all the time. It doesn't matter if it's in person or we're watching the news or it's someone in the grocery store. We are all connected by this divine root system, by universal love. And we are here to recognize the soul of the universe in everyone, as everyone. In the Hebrew Bible, in Genesis 12, 2, it says, I will bless you and you will be a blessing to all peoples on earth. We are here to be a blessing to one another. All that we are is a blessing to this world, my friends. We are here to be that. And yet, man, it can be difficult. Anybody? Oh. When we are faced with someone, let's say, who is on the other aisle from us, <coughs> or has a different cosmology or concept of the world, can we love someone we don't agree with? Always, 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 always. In always, we do not have to agree with them. Absolutely not. But the call is to love them anyway. It's what all the great spiritual teachers throughout millennia taught. Spiritual teachers... <laughs> have been talking about this for thousands of years, and herein lies the rub. We are here to love unconditionally, and that is not easy. That is not easy to recognize the divine root system that we all have and to support each other, even with people we don't agree with, to do our work to be the change we wish to see. You know, our, our, our spiritual activism is a huge, huge piece of this community. We are here to do this work, my friends, to support each other. This is the holy journey. This is the sacred and often messy path of the spiritual seeker. And we are here to do it with love, with love. Love. Speaking of love, I don't know about all of you, but in my family, the TV show that we love a lot, we love a lot of TV shows, but one of the TV shows we love a, lo a lot and can probably quote it chapter and verse, my daughters can, I cannot, they can, is The Office. Anybody? Like during the pandemic, it was sort of in the background. It's like a background soundtrack. <laughs> and um, the character from The Office, Dwight, yeah, brilliantly played by the actor Rain Wilson, is actually a spiritual seeker. He is a practicing Baha'i. 
He is the co-founder of the spiritually-minded media company Soul Pancake, if you, if you know that. He hosts a podcast that explores all things spiritual. He's really funny, and, and, uh, and he has a new book coming out. It just came out. It's called Soul Boom, Why We Need a Spiritual Revolution. I am reading it. I have asked Carolyn to get some copies. She will have some in our bookstore next week. I wanted to share with you an excerpt from this. He writes, a body, human body, body temple. A body simply could not be any more diverse, a slushy bag of skin that contains within it goopy liquids, gigantic bones, and tiny organs that determine all kinds of things. A cauliflower brain sparked with electrochemical impulses, eyelashes, nerve endings, toenails. All of these components could not be more various and distinctive from one another. At the same time, they are harmoniously linked and operating most of the time, hopefully, with incredible grace and fluidity. The body propels itself, meandering around a shopping mall or a park or a dining room, and meanwhile holds somewhere inside of it that miraculous flame of consciousness. He continues, all 37 trillion cells of the human body show flashes of independence, but at the end of the day, they are all working towards a larger unity. One could say all of humanity, too, is like the body. A single organism of 8 billion individuals grouped into a myriad of divergent parts, components, and bits and bobs that must harmoniously balance to function as a civilization. Isn't this a beautiful connection between our body and the human body? He goes on, this interconnectedness became blindingly apparent when a virus that started in rural China swept through the world, affecting every single country. Or when a tiny nation of Greece defaulted on its loans and upended stock markets globally. Or when supply chain change chains ceased up and car parts got stuck on cargo ships, affecting automobile prices everywhere. Remember that? He continues, we are all related. We need each other. We depend on each other. We affect each other. We are one human family, regardless of race or nation or class, sharing a rock in space. And so if you continue in this sort of evolutionary line of consciousness, you come to the inevitable conclusion, he writes, that we are not only interconnected, we are actually all one, like the pando, we are all one connected by this divine root system called love. And this world of ours, my friends, my loves, needs us to activate, to activate by leading with loving compassion. How do we do this in a polarized society? We must link arms with oneness. We must lead with the fullness of knowing this oneness. How do we do that? Again, as the Buddha said, by being awake enough to notice the ways in which we have opportunities to show up for each other, and to notice the moments when others show up for us. So for this week, I invite you first to allow the divine root system that connects all of us to be fully felt in your life. I'm going to invite you to bring that into your conscious awareness wherever you go throughout your day. I've been playing with this idea of actually seeing it as a root system. It's really powerful. Just for a moment, for, for those of you online, those of you here, those of you online, wherever you are, whatever city, whatever town, in your home, feel the connectedness of this divine love outside your home, wherever you are. Those of you here in this room, feel right now the connectedness the love that is to your left and your right and in front of you and behind you. It is profound.
when we remember this interconnectedness, we can say anything with love, we can speak truth to power, and we can pray with our feet. As Rabbi Heschel said, when I marched in Selma, my feet were praying. So the first thing this week, I invite you to see that visual. It's a powerful visual. The second, I'm going to invite you to allow your soul to meet the soul of the universe in everyone. Stay awake to the angels at work in your life. And the third, speaking of angels, I also invite you to wherever possible, be like Janine. Listen be guided, notice where you can show up as unconditional love and holy strength for another person, whether you know them or not. And then watch the blessings follow. <laughs>